Hey everyone, Fintech here. Today to talk about two very similar financial technology companies in my portfolio, Upstart and SoFi. Both companies offer loan services, both companies are disrupting the traditional finance services industry, and both companies have only recently become available to buy as public stocks. In this video, I will review what each company does, how the numbers are showing each company is performing, and what makes the two companies fundamentally different. Lastly, as always, I'll let you know whether or not I'm investing in either competitor. But to understand each company, you first need to understand how they got to where they are today. With SoFi valued at over $13 billion, up from just under $8 billion less than a year ago, and Upstart valued at nearly $10 billion, up nearly three times from the just over $3 billion when they IPO'd back in December. There must be some backstory to their current success. Let's start with Upstart. Upstart was founded by a team with plenty of notable names on their resumes, including David Girard, a former president of Enterprise Google, and Paul Gu, another Googler who also happened to be a Teal Fellow. They founded Upstart in 2012, but it was not until 2014 that they pivoted to their current line of business offering personal loans. What Upstart does is use AI to better predict whether or not someone is going to default on a loan. So rather than just using a single number like a FICO score to assess applicants, they take into account a whole array of statistical parameters such as GPA, college attended, and work history. They IPO'd relatively recently at the end of 2020 at a price of $44 per share. In the eight months between then and when I'm recording this video, the stock price has nearly tripled to over $127 per share giving them a current market cap of $9.8 billion. While the company basically started out with just a glorified statistical model to predict default rates, as the company grew, their models became more and more advanced, eventually incorporating AI into their software. Now, AI, that word gets thrown around a lot, so let's be clear on what that actually means. An AI algorithm in this context is essentially pattern recognition. Upstart has a huge number of data points that they feed into their algorithm with the goal of the algorithm outputting one number. How likely is the customer to default on their loan and not pay it back? If they can predict this better than their competitors, they can offer more loans at more competitive rates simply because they know who is a risky borrower and who isn't. And creating an AI model while complex can really be boiled down to two factors, the quality of the algorithm and the amount of data being fed in. And Upstart is starting to generate a lot of data. But an algorithm by itself does not generate money without the business model behind it. And Upstart makes money in three different ways. The first is paid referrals. When someone goes to Upstart's website looking for a loan, Upstart will evaluate that person's risk, make them a loan offer, then use capital from a traditional bank to fund that loan. In return, the bank provides a fee to Upstart. The second is through banks using Upstart's platform. Upstart allows banks to take their loan tool and to rebrand it for their own website to let borrowers find loans directly in the bank's ecosystem. They pay Upstart for this service as well. Finally, for a loan that Upstart farms out to a bank, they receive an annual fee for any loan that that bank is now servicing. Now, right now, Upstart is mainly focused on personal loans, but they did recently acquire Prodigy Software Platform, which is a car buying and lending platform, which they're using to get into the car financing space as well. And while it's nice that Upstart has these three streams of revenue, they're all tied back to Upstart's algorithm. As long as that algorithm makes lower risk easier to obtain loans than anyone else, they will keep making money. As soon as someone copies them, it's game over. The advantage to this is it's a naturally high margin business. And the key to both growth and profitability is to simply make more loans, which helps explain why Upstart is growing at 117% currently with the expectation to grow 157% in 2021 versus 2020. By the way, if you like this type of content, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that's a parameter that YouTube's AI uses to help push this video out to a wider audience. But while an AI algorithm can't keep getting better forever, Upstart's ability to feed back in the data that they are now generating from their greater loan volume can create a positive feedback loop. This means that, at least for a while, Upstart is actually getting even better at predicting who will default on a loan. This gives them at least some moat against what I view as their biggest risk, a larger competitor building a copy of Upstart's algorithm and taking away their competitive advantage. But there's another company that is applying innovative technologies to upend the traditional finance space who is growing even faster than Upstart while delivering even more products to their customers. 
SoFi. SoFi is one of the most successful fintech companies of the last decade, growing from a small startup to a full-on bank, offering billions in financial services every year. SoFi was founded in 2011 by four co-founders, including Mike Cagney, the then CEO of the company. Cagney was a former trader for Wells Fargo, and he had founded his own hedge fund prior to meeting his future co-founders at Stanford Business School. It was at Stanford that they decided to start their own company. And SoFi started out purely as a student loan company, offering loans to graduate students across the US. They soon branched out into all aspects of personal finance, from offering home mortgages, to a credit card, to more recently their SoFi investing app, a stock and crypto investing app. They even recently became one of the first fintech companies to obtain a banking license. But this growth from a smaller student loan company to a fintech company large enough to challenge traditional banks did not happen overnight, nor was it all smooth sailing. Early on, SoFi was plagued by accusations around a toxic workplace environment, and all of the co-founders except for the CEO Mike Cagney ended up leaving the company over the years to start different ventures. All this while SoFi continued to grow. The cultural issues eventually came to a head in 2017 when Mike Cagney left the company amid accusations of harassment from female employees. He was then replaced by the current CEO Anthony Noto, who is actually the former chief operating officer of Twitter, who also has experience as a managing director at Goldman Sachs and the CFO of the NFL. Noto has led the company for their recent expansion, and SoFi now has nearly 2.3 million members using their services, ranging from home loans to credit cards to mobile banking to their stock and crypto investing app. And because their members often use multiple services, they had nearly 3.2 million products used in this most recent quarter which is essentially an exponential increase from what they've seen the last two years. They also have an even larger number of users, which I couldn't find updated numbers for, but back in 2019, it was over 7.5 million registered users, with their mobile app having generally positive reviews in both the Apple and Android app stores. While SoFi is still not yet as large as some of the larger traditional financing banks like Wells Fargo or JP Morgan, their incredible ability to deliver technology services that make finance easy for the average person is clearly driving their incredible success. So that's some background on the company's stories, but now let's take a look at the numbers. So like I mentioned earlier, SoFi has a market cap of $13 billion, compared to Upstart's slightly smaller market cap of $9.8 billion. Well, looking first at Upstart's earnings from last quarter, in Q1 2021, the company reported revenues of $121.3 million, up 90% from last year and up 40% from just three months ago. This increase was likely a combination of organic growth and easy comparables since a year ago, the company was facing headwinds from the lockdown. The amount of revenue coming from their bank partners increased even faster, up 102% year over year. So that will become likely an even more significant portion of their revenue in the future. They showed a contribution profit of $55.8 million this quarter, which is up 117% year over year, which gives them a contribution margin of 48%. This would basically be their profit if you subtract out expenses relating to building new business segments or products. This increase in profitability obviously grew even faster than their revenue. And the company's CFO attributed this to more efficient marketing and operational efficiency, though that margin may decline somewhat in the near future. Despite softer loan demand from consumers due to government stimulus programs, almost 170,000 loans were transacted by their bank partners in Q1, more than double the volume from just two quarters ago. Finally, looking forward to their future, the company expects revenue between $150 and $160 million in Q2, which would be around a 28% growth rate quarter over quarter. That is insane growth. If they did that every quarter for a year, they would be generating 109% more revenue every year. They do expect their contribution margin to drop somewhat to 44%. For the full year of 2021, they expect to see revenue of $600 million, which would represent a year-over-year -year growth rate of 157%. This is also a big increase from their previous estimate that they would only make $500 million in 2021 last quarter. So clearly Upstart sees the clouds of 2020 starting to clear, and they are gearing up to grow as much as possible into that blue sky. But turning our attention now to SoFi. SoFi's revenue last quarter was up $216 million, up 151% in the last year. If we remove a one-time $5 million hit that they took from an interest expense on a note from a subsidiary they recently purchased, that makes this quarter their highest earning ever. They increased their total number of members up to 2.3 million, up 110% year over year. This is not only an insane growth rate, 
but it's actually an acceleration from what they've seen every other quarter. Their last four quarters, they've grown 59%, then 74%, then 90%, and now 110% year over year showing that scale is actually helping them capture even more members. This isn't super surprising because the total addressable market for the finance industry is essentially everyone in the country. So 2.3 million members is only a drop in the bucket compared to what's theoretically possible. If we look at how many products they provided, that number hit nearly 3.2 million, up 121% year over year. And if we look solely at their financial products, that growth rate is even higher at an increase of 273% year over year to 2.2 million in their most recent quarter. They still forecast their net revenue for the full year to be 751 million, which would put them up 58% year over year but this would also be a slowdown from the growth that they saw in this most recent quarter. This is most likely because if you look at the quarter one year ago, that was before lockdown. So they saw a huge surge in growth in Q2 2021, making it harder to grow the same amount relative to that higher base. So on the surface, SoFi seems to be growing faster, have a larger market, and just be an overall more mature company. But when we look at the company's forecasts, Upstart is forecasting them to be up 157% year over year, versus SoFi forecasting themselves to only be up 58%, though admittedly SoFi will still make more money overall, about 25% more in revenue. Meanwhile, Upstart is growing very well in their niche, but they are much more laser focused on the loan market, rather than expanding into multiple markets like SoFi. It's a different strategy, but it's one that makes sense, since Upstart has this moment now to capitalize on their algorithm before others can catch up. While SoFi really just needs to grab as many users as possible so that they can cross promote their services. But I mentioned earlier that one of Upstart's biggest risks is that they need to scale to make money and a company who already has a large scale might be able to copy the algorithm they have created. Maybe a company who's already in the loan market who has a proven technological background? Well, SoFi released this interesting chart as part of their investor presentation showing where they view their different products on an S-curve. This curve basically represents product growth. Products near the beginning have not yet started growing as fast as they ultimately will. Products in the middle are in their prime and products near the end are more mature and will not grow as quickly as they did in the past. Well, SoFi puts their lending business near the end of the S-curve, meaning they don't see massive growth ahead. Now, granted, the business is still growing at a 25% CAGR, but the fact that the company released this tells me that they plan on investing most of their efforts into growing their newer products. If that is true, it seems unlikely that they would be willing to invest in the huge upfront cost of creating an AI algorithm and gathering all the data required to compete with Upstart. In fact, I think it's more likely that they would just partner with Upstart. One of Upstart's revenue streams, after all, is allowing other banks to use their tool and rebrand it for themselves. Well, if SoFi doesn't want to invest in building out more lending products, it might make sense for them to use Upstart's ready-built tool and just pay them for the service. While these are both fintech companies that offer loans, I wouldn't exactly call them competitors, because while Upstart is laser-focused on offering the best loans they can and expanding into new areas of lending, SoFi is saying, eh, I've already been there and done that. So which company would I pick to invest in? Well, I don't think it needs to be an either or situation. They offer somewhat complementary products and right now they're both executing extremely well. That being said, I like Upstart slightly more for their greater forecasting growth rate and for the simplicity of their business model. Considering it's now valued at 50% less than SoFi, while forecasting only 25% less revenue for the year, admittedly with worse margins, I think that Upstart right now is a better deal. But that being said, with SoFi down from its previous SPAC-induced high of around $24 a share back when it went public, it is now starting to look like a potentially interesting investment as well. I may actually add a smaller investment into SoFi, which would probably be around half the size that I'm going to put into Upstart. Your takeaway might be totally different, and if you think you have a good argument for one versus the other, I'd love to hear it in the comments. I read all of them and try to respond to most. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.